Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before. I'm here with McFarland Toys DC Multiverse Blackest Night Atrocitus. This is the build a fig from this wave. You know, we got through all the reviews of the entire Blackest Night wave, and then all of a sudden the page punchers landed on my door. I had to drop everything and give those my full attention, but now we're back to Atrocitus. I've got the rest of this wave here holding up the pieces. We're gonna put them together here on camera. Before we do that, I gotta let you know, if you've ever wanted a piece of my DC Multiverse collection on your shelf, my Kickstarter campaign, which is fully funded thanks to your support, has just opened up a new reward tier where you can get an issue of the book and you can get a random figure from my collection with a signed hockey puck stand. It'll be a good figure too. I'm not trying to just pass on the dregs to you folks at home. So check that out. At the time of this recording, we're less than 25 bucks away from reaching our first stretch goal, which is gonna be holographic drop shadow stickers. They're gonna look just like this, except they're gonna be much larger. They're gonna be four inches by two inches. Those are gonna look great. And the next stretch goal is gonna be from before fig stickers. So please check that out. And as always, thank you very much for your ongoing support. Now let's build Atrocitus here. I think we're gonna to wanna to start with the legs. Oh, get a sense of how long these legs are before we attach the torso here. I don't think he's going to be a full 200% size of a regular 7-inch multiverse figure, but he is going to be pretty large. We're looking at sockets like so. That will just plug in. Oh, wow. It's looking cool already. I've just put one leg on. The leg was very easy to slid right in and snapped pretty. It doesn't take much at all, that's nice. Get his arm here, sorry bats. Pop the head on like so. His armor over his shoulders has Couple pegs that go into these slots right here. So that's gotta be one of the easiest to assemble build a figs they've done so far. And once you put it together, it doesn't feel like it's been assembled by hand. It feels like sturdy, like it's meant to be that way. Like it's not gonna just fall apart and lose any limbs. And he is definitely big. You can see here everyone else's, the tops of their head hit a right around his pecs shoulders well above everyone else's head so he does have that formidable presence not the tallest we've ever seen but definitely enough size to stand out next to these regular figures before i go too far into moving him around i really want to take stock of something right now hang on so the multiverse line it's been doing great stuff with textures for a long long time they've been doing stuff printing into the soft rubbery material. Some extra texture, give it an extra level of character. Looks really great, but the work with textures lately has kind of turned a corner and they're in a whole entire new class level lately. And it's not just the quality of the sculpts, but that each one is unique and memorable, like Zod's cape, for example. This feels very, feels a little bit alien. It also feels very regal, it feels kind of expensive. You look at Infected Batman, and not only does he have these loose wrinkles, like his costume is ill-fitting, but it also has this kind of ratty-looking texture that gives you a little bit of idea of the character and their story. Godspeed here, which has a couple different textures going on, they, they give you that idea of really advanced athletic wear. And now this one here that's both on Kyle Rayner and Atrocitus. You can see this otherworldly, very precise looking texture printed all the way throughout their body. It just takes it to that extra level, makes it feel like more than just a smooth, you know, plain humanoid body buck and it gives it an extra level of, of a tactile quality. When you hold it in your hand, it just feels premium. It feels extra. It rocks. Now let's start to get a sense of what this guy can really do and actually bring him in for a closer look. And while I just said the feel of this, these parts of the body that have this texture printed on them, they feel really great. These just feel a little cheap and rubbery, I have to admit. I think this will be interesting to kind of see 
when it comes to the build of figs the mega figs i do tend to prefer ones that have kind of more monstrous proportions because the fun factor tends to be very high you know they have these bespoke sort of articulation points that really suit the personality of just that character that tends to be more my flavor but i have to admit with figures like swamp thing and i'm thinking this guy as well you know sometimes a traditional humanoid shape with that just extra size can be very high on the fun factor. A lot of movement in that neck. It is kind of, when I move the neck around, this kind of, this is kind of one to come out. That does feel like the, the weak link, the weak link um, structurally there. But the head has a tremendous amount of movement, really. Getting the clear of his collar. Maybe if you start to get there, you might have that happen. Just coming up in here doesn't interfere too much. Really smooth movement. Double elbows there, get really tight. Yeah, very fun. Lots of personality in these. These arms. They manage to give him a really nice neutral stance and yet he takes on a lot of different sort of energies depending on how you move them around. Great movement here at the torso. You can, you can look down at his tiny little puny adversaries. Rotates there at the waist. Rotates at the diaphragm. Great rotation at the hips. I love that. He's going to have really solid forward kicks. Not much. His butt there is... A little bit in the way of backwards. Great double knee though, on a huge beefy dude like that. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty awesome, right? He does have lightly sculpted ball joint ankles underneath there. That worked really well. This stretchy stuff gets out of the way. I'm pinching it a little bit. Cuts are awfully deep and ugly right there. Kind of an ongoing thing. Not a deal breaker. I just hope to see it improve over time. Ah, and then here we go. This is a pose I'm always trying to get figures in. It feels like it's awfully difficult to get very many figures to do this sort of arms cross pose, get those two hands making contact, you know, especially when they have one open and one fist. Yeah, I really love that. This guy's pretty fun. Um, you know, I don't mind having some assorted DC villains. Like you probably know my, my preferred area of the multiverse to be filling out on my own shelves is Batman heavy, so... As far as being like a must-have for me, this guy isn't quite a must-have, but really, really tremendously fun and, and looks great, feels great in hand. Fun factor is very high. Like I said, it's always it's always enjoyable to have these extra sized figures that still move essentially the same way or even better than the regular seven inch figures. I'll put a couple other build a fig, mega fig entries up here so you can kind of see that size comparison he's he is tall he's awfully lean too so again another one of the things i like about the figures the, about the mega figs and build a figs with the monstrous proportions is it, it tends to feel like you're getting like a little bit more plastic oh and you know who i really want to see him with i really like those two together it's the blue and the red it looks really really sharp canonically you know makes no sense whatever whatever looks cool right and we can see him with these lanterns too. I think between having these two lantern body bucks, I wouldn't complain too much about if they started kind of reusing these heavily, put a different head on it. Well, as long as they cycle it out, keep it a little fresh. And now the parallax is starting to hit shelves too. That's a that's another unique sort of silhouette. So, we, you know, we don't just keep getting the same lantern figure over and over again. They can give us a little variety, a little bit of reuse, a happy medium there. I, I wouldn't wouldn't be too mad about it. Curious to see if Batrocitus is a reuse of this. It looks almost identical, but the scale is hard to hard to figure out. And I 
don't know if they'd put something quite that big in a in a twenty dollar package. So that is Atrocitus. It definitely rocks. He's definitely going to be a crowd pleaser for me. Not really vital at all. Going to have a hard time making room for him on my shelf. And this whole wave, the Blackest Night wave, really excellent figures uh, throughout. But besides this Batman, who I could carve out a spot for him in like my Hall of Armor shelf. But with all the new releases hitting, I, I really I don't need this guy. You guys know me. I'm trying to fill out that Bat family. A couple versions of Batman's rogues and the death metal stuff. That's kind of my speed, and well, this is really excellent. I don't need too many more figs with this kind of flavor, right? All right, guys. Atrocitus, thanks for being patient and allowing the Page Punchers detour while we waited to put this guy together. Thank you again for all the support you've been showing during my Kickstarter campaign and the ongoing promotional onslaught. That is all greatly appreciated. And then coming up soon, we're going to have Superwoman and finally the weapons pack. So I'll talk to you guys very soon. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye.